Hey there, and welcome back. I know that everyone is wondering what is underneath this cover. In the last video, I made a trip up north of Detroit in Michigan and picked up a bunch of cars that were abandoned in a shed. I loaded up the cars and brought them back and showed all the cars except for this one. There was a lot of good guesses on what is under the cover, everything from Lotus to Jaguar. Well, let's pull back the cover and find out what's under it. What we're looking at here is a Mark III Elva race car. There was a bunch of cars in the shed and most of them were gone before I got there, but this is the one that I really wanted. Let's take a quick look around. This is a later Mark III, so this was actually built by the Trojan Elva Company. We have a few inspection stickers from races here. There's another one from VSCDA on the roll bar over there. So maybe five, six years ago, this car might have been racing. It's obviously sat for some time. But look at this, if I turn the kill switch, we do get a light over there. So I'm hopeful that it won't be too much work to get this working. Maybe the car was started periodically or maybe they were driving it around just on the street for fun. This car is licensed and street legal. They use the carriage key, let's open the boot. There's a bunch of stuff left over in here. This car was shown at the Detroit Concours. You can see the fuel save fuel cell. I just noticed the lug nuts. Look at how long it's been since those wheels have come off. Those are totally corroded. I love the neat Smith's tri-gauge. Has oil pressure, water temp, and fuel. We have a tachometer. Speedometer shows 10,000 miles. And then we have another oil pressure gauge over here and a water temp gauge, which is loose at the moment. So either it shook loose or maybe it doesn't work and they were about to take it out and replace it. The battery on Elvas is in the passenger footwell, just like it is here on the race car. I think one of the seats that I picked up is the seat that goes in here. There is a harness so that someone can ride in the car. And this is really gross. I'm going to have to clean these seats up because the mice have been in here and they have been making a mess of this car for some time. If we open up the bonnet, you can see the MGA engine. We have a Weber carb. The car does have dual master cylinders for the brakes as well as a master cylinder for the clutch. The radiator setup is kind of crazy. So I'm not quite sure what that fitting right there is. I'm guessing that's a bleeder, but it's open on the top, so I'm not sure what that is. This is where we would fill the coolant over here in this tank. There is a lot of wiring running around this car, so I may need to sort that out. It's a lot of wiring for something that is this simple. I just think that this is a really cool car, and this should be the fastest of all the vintage race cars that I have, so I'm really excited to get this out on track. Unfortunately, this also runs in group two with my other cars, so I cannot take this car and one of my other cars and run them at the same time, but I would think this car could be running out in the front of group two. Let's see if this car will run. First, I want to pull the spark plugs out, so I'm going to mark the spark plug wires. I'll just put dots on them to signify which one they were on. Looks like these ones have tape. Still, That one still says three. This one says four. Now we'll pull the spark plugs out and see what the cylinders look like. Spark plugs look pretty good. You can see they have a ground going to the engine here. This car having a fiberglass body, you can't rely on the body to give you grounds. Okay, everything looks pretty good in there. Cylinder walls look clean. I'm going to leave the spark plugs out for a minute. Let's check about getting fuel. So you can see the fuel line comes over there and then it goes into this pipe. There is a sensor on that. So one of those oil pressure gauges is probably actually reading fuel pressure. That goes down underneath the car. So there must be an electric fuel pump somewhere, possibly in the fuel safe. So let's turn the ignition on and see if we can get fuel pressure up to the carb. There were no instructions that came with this car, so obviously I don't know what these switches do. Let's turn the kill switch on. So we have power. Let's turn ignition on. There we go, fuel pump's running. Electric fan is also running. 
Seems like that's electric fan. Okay, that's fuel pump. Now that we know how to turn the fuel pump on, let's disconnect the hose at the carb and see if there's any fuel coming up there. I just released the hose from the carb and fuel came out. So I'm guessing the fuel pump is running. The gas actually smells fresh. So it might not have been so long since this actually ran. Let's put this back on. By the way, the owner of these cars passed away recently, probably unexpectedly, so there's no one really to ask about these cars. Let's see if there's oil in the car, and then we can crank it over and see if it builds up oil pressure. Looks like the oil level is right at the max line, so we're good. I'm going to crank it over with the fuel pump off and the spark plugs out, which will make it a lot easier to crank, and we'll just watch and see if we get oil pressure. I assume this is the start button. Not seeing either oil pressure gauge move yet. These gauges might not be mechanical, so let's turn the key on. Try this again. There we go. Oil pressure is going up. We got 40 PSI. Everything should be nice and lubricated now. I think we can try to start it. Let's check the reservoir real quick, see if there's any coolant or water or anything in here. There's, it's bone dry and there's a bunch of mouse droppings in there. Now, how in the world did mice droppings get in there? They couldn't have come in that hose. And I don't think they could fit through this little hose either. So maybe it was left with the cap off. They probably drained the block because you need to run water in the car when you're racing it. They might have drained it all out to put it away so that it wouldn't freeze. Left this cap off and then mice jumped down in there. Luckily, they didn't die down there. That reservoir is pretty deep, so I'm going to have to be creative on how to get the mouse droppings out of there. But before I do anything, I see the pet cock, the drain down there. So I'm going to make sure that that is tight and not open before I dump any fluids in here. Well, this drain doesn't move. It's completely seized up, so I hope this is shut. So I've had this vacuum. You plug it into an airline, and it can get down into real small spaces. Let's see if this will fit in there. No, it barely does not fit. Maybe I can stick a hose on this and get it to work. I've stuck some hoses together so that I can get down in there. Okay, that seemed to work. Now let's put some water in. Okay, I hear it leaking out. Okay, so there's actually, must be another drain somewhere. If we look down at the bottom of the radiator, there's actually a plug down there that's been removed. And I think on this little AN fitting, there was probably a plug that was screwed onto that too. So I need to see if I can find those two things. I couldn't find anything in the car, but I did find a plug that I can put onto here. And I also found a 3 8 bolt that seems to go in there just fine. I don't know if it's going to seal. Let's add some water, see if it does. I'm sure it will work good enough to at least see if the engine fires. Doesn't look like it's leaking. Let's fill it the rest of the way up. Let's put the spark plugs back in and see if it runs. This is the first time I've fully sat in this car. This is a really comfortable seat and seating position. So, master switch on. Ignition on. Fuel pump on. Let's see if it starts. One and two. Tachometer's not working. 
fuel gauge probably not working. But it runs. Sounds pretty neat too. Well, I think that's going to be it for today. If you want to see more videos on this car, comment below and click subscribe. Also, I race a lot of race cars from modern prototypes to Miatas to vintage race cars. And I haven't shown a lot of racing prep on this channel. So if you would find the preparation to get this car ready for a race interesting, comment below and let me know if you would like to see that. Also, the 70th year reunion for Elvis will be at the Putten Bay races next year. So I am planning on taking this car and racing it there in the races. There is still a lot to do on this car. There seems to be a lot of electrical gremlins. And of course, a lot of things have to be looked at and gone through before this car can be put on track. So look for more videos of this car in the future.